Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. So, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week, week and a half ago, I posed a question, what would you guys like to see? And I incorporated a few of those ideas in this cake. So this cake has a scalloped bottom tier that I will show you how to do without having to purchase the discs. I did some colored rice paper puffs, and I also included some silver. So stick around and we'll get right to it. I was given the hint from one of my subscribers to use oil-based candy coloring on these uh, puffs instead of using the gel coloring because I had tried it before and it didn't work well. So I tried it with this and it did work. It did work um, not as well as without. I didn't get as much of a puff out of them, but it still gave a really unique look and there's some color to them. So I, I like that. So I went ahead and incorporated it into this cake. And what I'm doing is I am just taking my sheets of, I always want to say wafer paper, rice paper, and cutting them into smaller sections, some little triangular sections. And I just combined red and pink. You saw me with three colors and some water. That's all that is. Um, some black coloring, but that was for a different cake. I did these all at the same time. So I'm going to try to show you mainly just the pinky red ones because that's what I put on this cake. So I did combine the red and the pink. I was going for a deeper color, so I did go back and add a little bit more red, but you just want to go ahead and saturate both sides of the paper and then set it aside next to a fan to dry. It took maybe an hour, hour and a half is all that was. And then I just heated up some vegetable oil when you see that it creates bubbles at the end of a wooden skewer, or spoon, you know that it's ready. And you just plop those in and just let them puff. That's all. And then you just set them on your paper towel to drain. And this is how you can make this scalloped look and other texturized look, vertical looks on your cakes without having to purchase those um, discs. If you want to purchase those, they're fine. I'll try to remember to add a link on where you can get those. But what I did was I used a pan the same size as the cake that I did. It was a five inch pan. And I cut or drew a line, a circle around a larger board, an eight inch board. Cut it down to size and then I cut down a piece, piece of parchment paper the same size as the board. Now take your um, parchment round and fold it in half, fold it in half again, and then make thirds. This is how we're going to make our scalloped edge. And that's what that looks like. And then I'm going to find a cookie cutter that's about the size of um, the scallop that I wanted. And then I just held it up to the bottom there to show you that it's going to go from fold to fold. And I used some masking tape to mark on the cookie cutter where I wanted to place it on the board. Now I'm going to need one for the top and for the bottom, so I just went ahead and traced and cut another board. I just used um, an X-Acto knife to cut those down. And then I'm taking my piece of parchment. I suppose I didn't have to mark the center. All I had to do was just open it up and place it in the middle and then mark where all of those folds are on the board. That way you know where to place your cutter. And see how I'm just placing it so that the outside edge of that tape um, that I'm the pre-marked spot is sitting on the the line that I or the circle that I drew around on the board and then I'm just gonna create those scallops all the way around and do it on both pieces of your um, your cake rounds make sure that uh, you use a sharp blade to cut these scallops out otherwise you're gonna have a lot of raggedy ends and you don't want that and what I did here was I marked where each of the boards were cut exactly the same so that you are, when you line up your boards on the top and the bottom you have those marks to know where to place them so that you have the same scallop on each one top and bottom does that make sense because it's just gonna help you get a more smooth look and make sure that you have um, marked the back side of the boards. Because if you mark the shiny side, when you place it on top of your cake, when you um, are going to frost it, you're not going to be able to see it. So I just went ahead and I didn't show you, but I just filled this with buttercream. 
and I'm doing a chrome coat on it. It doesn't matter the color because it's going to be covered up with the final color anyway. I just used some buttercreams that I had, some leftover colors, and just use those. Make sure that it's nice and level. And then go ahead and set it in your freezer to chill for about 20 minutes before, eh, yeah, 10 to 20 minutes before you do this next step. And then I just put the one scalped board on the bottom, shiny side up, use some masking tape underneath that board and then underneath the cake board that the cake is actually on also to hold them in place. Make sure that that's centered and put your final buttercream on the top. Put another round of parchment that's smaller than the scalloped, scalloped pieces, the inner part of that scallop so that it's not sticking out. And then make sure that your scallops are lined up vertically and um, that the outside edges are the same. I guess that would be vertical too. So the, the, the peaks and valleys of the scallops, I don't know what to call that, are lined up. And go ahead and I like to put a little bit of buttercream underneath that top cake board to hold it in place as I'm messing with the rest. Otherwise it wants to kind of scooch around. But I did put a little bit of buttercream on the board before I attached it to the parchment. Now I'm just making sure that everything is level. And go ahead and fill in in between the boards. It's gonna take a lot of buttercream. These have a lot of buttercream. There's no way around it. Absolutely no way around it. And I'm just filling in where the thickest part of the scallops is. Just to, you know, prevent me from having to work too hard later. And just fill in your gaps. And use your scraper to go in and out of those scallops. Now it's going to take a few rounds of doing this. You're going to end up having to put it in the freezer, let it firm up, come back to it, put a little bit more in on and fill in those bubbles that are inevitably going to happen and do that until you just have a smooth finish. As you can see this is my third time going at it here and I didn't even show you all of it. I find that doing thinner besides your first coat you know you need to kind of pack that buttercream in there but it kind of, it makes it easier to do thinner layers and clean them up as opposed to thicker. And I had sprayed, it looks a little darker because I had sprayed it with water to um, help me smooth out the buttercream. And just take your time doing this. Just allow yourself some time to mess around with it. And remember, your freezer is your friend for these types of um, techniques. And after I the final coat was, uh, the final scraping was done, I put it in the freezer and let it firm up. And this is how I'm removing the boards. I had turned that cake upside down, took the bottom board off, put my finished board on the bottom, flipped it right side up, and then removed that board and the parchment. Now you can go in and fill in the top to get that nice clean edge on the top. You can thin out this buttercream a little bit if you want to, if it's easier to work with. I've done it so many times. I used to use a, the, um, the discs all the time before I had kind of perfected my technique on how to get the crisp corners. Um, so yeah, so just go ahead and fill that in and then remove the excess. But you can thin it down as what I was saying. I lost my train of thought there. You can thin it down if you need to, if it makes it easier to work with for that top part. And just remove that extra water that always accumulates on my board and your extra pieces of buttercream that have gotten transferred onto the bottom board. Always happens. So what I'm doing there is I'm just removing some um, water drips. My hands are clean and dry. They look dirty. It's just the food coloring. And yes, I know my shirt matches the cake. Maybe I subconsciously did that, but that was not intentional. <laughs> Because I honestly didn't know what color I wanted to go with until I was working with it. I knew I wanted a, a reddish pink, but I wasn't sure exactly what shade. And it turned out a little bit more on the pink side. And maybe that was my subconscious being like, hey, your, your shirt's kind of a cool color. Let's do that on the cake. <laughs> so I set that in the refrigerator to uh, chill while I worked on the top tier. I'm decorating it. And I'm just using a buttercream marble technique. I'm using my acetate sheet. And I am just using more of that pink color buttercream and um, white and that middle bowl I combined them a little bit the white bowl I left it alone and you just take um, bits of each color slightly marble them together in the bowl and then um, just smear them onto your acetate sheet don't overthink it 
Just let it work itself out. Just don't incorporate the colors too much or you're just going to get a pale pink all over. You want to keep the colors kind of separated a little bit by just marbling slightly in the bowl before you put them on your parchment or your, your acetate. Cleaned off the edges and then brought my cake out from the freezer and just lifted it right on the cake and smooth it with your fondant smoother. Put it back in the freezer and chill for a good 30 minutes or until you can remove the sheet without it sticking to it. And then go ahead and use your scraper just to kind of smooth out any imperfections. I didn't mind having some holes for that slightly rustic look, but I did want to fill in that bottom gap. I didn't like that bottom gap. And right where the seams met, I kind of scraped that together a little bit. And then I just wanted to add some to the top to smooth it all out and finish off that tier. Now go ahead and set that in your freezer. Bring out your other cake from the refrigerator and out, add your dowels. I'm using some big straws that, um, I, they're fine. They're not my preferred ones. They're a little bit too bendy. Uh, so I like to use a um, small rolling pin to kind of push it in the cake. Otherwise my hands, I find when I push with my hands, it bends them. So eh, they're okay. But next time I will get slightly thicker straws. And place your tear on top. And go ahead and start attaching your say your oh, sails. I keep wanting to say that your puffs to the side of the cake. You can just use buttercream to attach those. Now I did notice with the oil-based coloring in these um, puffs, they did puff up, but they definitely get way puffier if you use less color. I kind of really highly saturated them because I knew when they fried them, they were going to lighten. Um, so I would suggest using them for a more pastel -y kind of look. And you're always gonna get uh, a more puffed puff when you use them without any color at all. And just go with the white. It's just the nature of the beast. And then I just used some silver edible silver leaf on the cake. I didn't have to add, add anything to cake to get to the cake to get them to stick because there was some um, condensation happening. This was a very humid, humid day. In the Midwest, we have humidity too. So when you guys ask me questions about humidity, trust me, I feel your pain. It, it's awful. It can make your job 10 times harder than it needs to be. We just have to work with it. And there you go, guys. My cake that I used your suggestions for, and I appreciate all of your comments and suggestions. And if there's some that I did not use this time, go ahead, just watch. I maybe use them next time. And I did forget to mention that I just used some isomalt that I just kind of um, spread out on a piece of parchment. Just kind of drizzled it on there and let it cool. And I added those little isomalt spikes as an added touch. So I hope you liked it. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.